When you take mineral oil, you often also need relief from excess stomach acidity. And when that's the case, mineral oil alone means only halfway relief. So try Haley's M.O. It combines mineral oil with acid alkalizing milk of magnesia. Means thorough relief. Caution, use only as directed. Get Haley's, capital M dash capital O. Haley's M.O. Now we present once again Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble, a little Iowa girl who married one of America's most handsome actors, Larry Noble, matinee idol of a million other women. The story of what it means to be the wife of a famous star. Keep it clean with Energene. Thousands of women know that spotted clothes make a bad impression socially and in business. That's why they keep Energene cleaning fluid on hand at all times. For Energene makes dirty grease spots go right before your eyes. Try Energene. You'll be amazed by the swift, efficient way it works on dresses, hats, handbags, stockings, even upholstery and rugs. Energene is unsurpassed for removing the most stubborn grease spots from almost anything you can think of, including your most delicate silks and laces. Just follow directions and energy cleans so efficiently that it leaves no telltale rings where spots have been. There's nothing you can get at any price that's faster or better than energy. So keep your things spotless in better condition with energy cleaning fluid. It's easy to use, too. Right now, put energy on your marketing list. You can get it at your drug, grocery, or variety store. Remember, energy gets it clean, so keep it clean with energy. Now, Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble and what it means to be the wife of a famous star. When Eric Jackson, the famous playwright, allowed his emotions to take control of his judgment and pour out his love for Mary while he was a guest in the Noble's Rosehaven Long Island home, it brought about a greater repercussion than he ever dreamed of. For it so happened that Larry Noble came into the room and overheard his words. Now Larry is unable or unwilling to believe that Mary was completely innocent of any complicity in the scene. The result has been that Mary moved to New York to the hot little hotel room of her friend Maud Marlowe while she looks for a job. But today she's returned to her house and there, unexpectedly, has run into Larry, who has announced... There's no use saying anything more about it, Mary. You might as well make up your mind to stay here in your own house. Look after our son. I'll do the moving. I'll stay at the Green Room Club in New York until I can find something else. But that's just what I don't want to do, Larry. I tell you, it's impossible for me to stay on in this house. When you and I are so far apart in our hearts. And I tell you that I won't stand for you taking Larry Jr. to New York. This is where he belongs. And if you intend seeing him, this is where it'll be. You're very high-handed, Larry. I have a right to be. It's perfectly true that I can't force you to remain with me or even to go on carrying anything for me. But I can see to it that you don't take my son to live with you in New York, where you can be close to Eric Jackson. You're determined to see everything in the worst possible light, aren't you, Larry? I don't see that it matters anymore. Perhaps it doesn't to you. But for your information, I haven't seen Eric since I left here. I haven't heard from him, nor do I expect to. I find that hard to believe. That's because you're so anxious to believe the worst. You would say that, Mary. Perhaps it's because you want to jump at the chance of being free. Free to run around all over New York with the dashing Regina Rawling. That's ridiculous. There's not a word of truth in your insinuation, and I think you must know. Why should I know it? How can I know anything about you when you behave this way? When you're set against me and refuse to believe anything except your own distorted picture of the fact. Distorted? Are you trying to make me believe that I can't hear when a man tells my wife he adores her? Do you think I don't see clearly when I find this man with his arms around you? All right, Larry. You won't be convinced. There's nothing more I can say. That's perfectly true. And so I'm leaving. I'll take this suitcase, and when I have a chance, I'll either send for the rest of my things or I'll come for them. Whatever you please. 
You can be quite sure that I'll phone first to see if it's convenient. That's a despicable thing to say. Is it? Then I'm sorry. I guess this is goodbye, Mary. Yes, sir. I'm anxious to do everything I can to make you comfortable. If the going's pretty tough right at the start, please believe that I'll be working to straighten everything out. Thank you, Larry. I won't be a burden to you, I promise you that. Well, I guess there's nothing more to say. No. Shall I close the bedroom door or leave it open? Close it, please. All right, Mary. Goodbye. Goodbye. Is that you, Mary? No, it's me. Oh, Larry. Well, come on in the living room and sit down. Wait, I can't, Maud. I've got to get right down to the station. Now, Larry. Oh. Oh, you're going away after all. Of course. When we came to pack some things, I told you that. But you and Mary have been upstairs talking for such a nice long time. I, I thought, of course, you'd come to realize how unnecessary all this separation is. I'm afraid we don't see it in such a casual light, Maud. But we both agree on one thing. You've been a grand friend. And we appreciate all you've done for us. Staying here and looking after Larry Jr. Don't talk nonsense. What are you proposing to do now? I'm going to move to the green room club. And Mary? She's going to stay here and look after her child. So it's all settled. And Mary has given up the notion of going to work? I don't know. But she'll stay here in her own home if she expects to continue to see our son. Oh, Larry, you didn't talk that way to Mary, did you? Of course I did. I told her just how things stand. Oh, you fool, you bungling idiot. I'm sorry you think of me that way, but I suppose it's to be expected. You and your idiotic false pride. You throw away the happiness of a lifetime just to save your miserable ego. I don't think I can stay for your lecture, Maud. My train won't wait. No. No, you'd better go along. I can see that you've made it impossible for anyone to help either of you. Naturally, you believe it's all my fault. I suppose you'd expect me to accept Eric Jackson's attentions to my wife with good grace. I should clear my throat as a warning when I enter the room. I should always make my plans known. Oh, Larry, you're talking like a silly child. It's all very well for you to preach, Maud. It isn't your home that's crumbling. I almost feel that it is. Well, Larry, I... I'm sorry... More sorry than I can say. Perhaps when you've both had a little time to think this through, you'll, you'll realize what a mistake you're making. I don't see how it can be helped. Anyhow, good luck to you, Maud. I, I'd appreciate anything you can do to help Mary. You, you still love her, don't you, Larry? Love? <laughs> what good does it do to love anyone? That's a fool's game. Only let yourself in for trouble sooner or later. Well, I've learned my lesson. From now on, it's going to be different. You can be sure of that. Daddy! Daddy! Hello, Larry Jr. Daddy, wait! Wait for me! I can't wait now, son. I've got to hurry. Where are you going, Daddy? To New York. Oh, but you got that big old suitcase. I know. Why? Because I'm going to have to stay for a while. Well, why, Daddy? Why does everybody have to go away? When's Mommy coming home? I don't want everybody to go away. Your Mommy's in the house right now. She is? When did she come back, Daddy? Why didn't she say she was coming back? Guess maybe she wanted to surprise you. Well, why are you going away just when Mommy's coming home? I'm afraid I can't help it, Larry Jr. But uh, aren't we ever going to be all together again? We didn't even have the picnic you promised, and I don't like it when you go away. To tell you the truth, son, I don't like it myself. I don't like it at all. Then why'd you go? It's something I've got to do. When are you coming back, Daddy? I don't quite know. Tonight? No, not as soon as that. Tomorrow? Tomorrow's Saturday, Daddy, and, and we could have a picnic on the beach. And you could see how my dog can swim. I'd like that. I'd like that very much, but I just can't make it. Well, I don't see why everybody goes away all the time. 
I don't see why that we can't all be home together like always. Annie Maud keeps saying that I've got to wait. I don't want to wait, Daddy. Well, we can't always do what we want to do, Larry Jr. Remember that. And try to remember to be a very good boy and do everything Mommy tells you. Will you try? Yes, Daddy. If she doesn't go away and leave me again, will she? You'd better ask her. She's been away for days and days and days. And she didn't even call me up on the telephone. I don't want her to go away anymore. You tell her that, Larry Jr. And maybe she won't have to leave you ever again. I'll tell her, Daddy. And I'll tell her that you're going to come home real soon. No. No, better not tell her that. Why? Because I'm afraid it isn't quite true. Daddy, are you going so very far away? Not very far. Only to New York. Oh, you can come home from New York. Oh, Mommy takes me to New York all the time to get my clothes and get my teeth fixed and everything. It isn't far, Daddy. Well, it's, it's farther than you think. Goodbye, Larry Jr. Be a good boy and do what Mommy says. I'll come and see you very soon. Can I walk part ways with you, Daddy? No, you'd better not. I, I don't want you out near the road alone. Besides, your little dog might get run over. No, he won't. Duke stayed right by my side. He's an awful good old daddy. I know he is. And he belongs to an awfully fine little boy. Goodbye, son. Want to give daddy a big hug? Yes. Oh, daddy, please don't go away anymore. Please come back soon. Promise. I'll try. I'll do the best I can. And so Larry Noble takes leave of his son, who looks after him disconsolately as he strides down the walk. And from the upper window, Mary watches the scene with aching heart, wondering how she can possibly knit back the fabric of her life without Larry. What will she decide to do? Be sure to be listening Monday to Backstage Wife, the story of Mary Noble and her husband Larry Noble, famous Broadway star. Keep it clean with Energeen. You're almost certain to look shabby even in the most stylish dress if it's marred by dirty grease spots. That's why it pays to have Energeen cleaning fluid on hand at all times. In just a jiffy, Energine makes stubborn grease spots go right before your eyes. Energine is the ideal cleaning fluid for almost anything you can think of. Dresses, suits, coats, hats, curtains, rugs, upholstered chairs. It cleans swiftly and efficiently and is unsurpassed for use on even your most precious laces, silks, and velvets. Simply follow directions and you'll see that Energine cleans so efficiently it leaves no telltale rings to mark the places where grease spots have been. You can be sure that no matter how much you pay, you can get nothing, absolutely nothing, that'll remove even the most deep down grease spots more quickly or more dependably than Energine. It's easy to use, too. Right now, put Energine on your marketing list. You can get it at your drug, grocery, or variety store. Remember, Energine gets it clean, so keep it clean with Energine. Mary Noble, backstage wife, will be on the air again Monday at this same time. Ford Bond speaking for the makers of Energene Cleaning Fluid.